all and welcome to 15 days of festive fear day number 10 and i have four spooky stories for you today and the last story comes from september the 6th 2023 and story number one comes from vicky back in 2012 my dad suffered a major heart attack and had to undergo a triple bypass surgery it was a long operation and during the procedure my dad's lungs collapsed and he was clinically dead until thankfully they successfully brought him back A few months later, my dad, who up until that point hadn't spoken much about this time in hospital, let slip that he had had a really odd experience. During the operation, he had had an out-of-body experience, at the point when he crashed when his lungs had gone. He said he floated up out of his body and off the table and was looking down on the scene. He could see people dashing around and getting him back and soon he was pulled back into himself and the next thing he was coming around in recovery. At this point, he had no clue that he had had an NDE, but it all clicked when he had a conversation with the doctors who told him how it went. Now, my dad is a massive non-believer. He takes the piss out of my mum who sees ghosties, etc. a lot, and he used to make fun of me and my mum for watching things like Most Haunted during our mum and daughter evenings. He has, along with me and mum, experienced many strange things in our house like doors being opened, glasses and cups moving, and on one occasion a full-body apparition. But he has explanations and reasons for all of it. Because of this, I'm more inclined to believe his experience because he would have no reason to lie. Maybe it was a dream. But I don't think so. It would have been a massive coincidence if it was. He hasn't spoken about it since and has gone back to his old ways of laughing at me and mum when we talk about ghosts or watch our paranormal programmes. I truly believe that my dad had an OBE. I'm just relieved that he was pulled back. I'm relieved for you too that he was pulled back. And this is our second OBE at sort of time of death and being brought back that we've had in the last little while. And they're one of the things that I have a hard time disbelieving. And part of the reason that I have a hard time disbelieving is that so many people have had these OBEs where they have felt their soul leave their body, float up into the air. They're on the ceiling looking down at everything that's happening. They're watching people running around. They're watching people who are, you know, panicking, who are trying to bring them back, all of that stuff. Because the brain is so individual and we really don't understand how the brain works, right? I mean, fundamentally we understand how it works but there's lots of aspects of the brain that we still don't understand right similar to sleep paralysis experiences i always feel like obes if it was just a natural brain response to some sort of trauma i feel like they would all be different for 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 different people your brain would create something different but they seem to be so similar across the board that it just makes me believe that they possibly happened you know and that there is some sort of essence of you that leaves your body when you when you have these near-death experiences and story number two comes from tara i lived on a very old farm which had been passed down through my family for centuries i was 13 when this story takes place when i was that age i was convinced that ghost stories and the likes were all tales that were told to children to fill their curious minds Our farm had survived the Great Famine of the mid-1800s and it was no secret that many of my ancestors had died in the old house on that farm. It had mainly been used to house cattle and sheep but by the time that I came along my mother, who always loved horses, got me into horse riding and so we started creating a breeding farm. We had around 11 horses at this point and so they had many stables around the farm. At the crack of dawn and the end of the night every day, I would go up to feed them during the winter as during the summer they would usually be out in the fields grazing. On one particular night, I went up as usual to feed the horses. On this night, the rain was torrential, something which is not uncommon in Ireland. The rain was so bad, I put my hood up on my coat and put my face down so as to avoid the pelting drops of water. As I made my way through the darkness, I heard something which startled me, solely because the last time I checked, all of the horses were safely away in their stables. I heard the sound of hooves clattering off the ground and I initially grew confused and slightly on edge as I couldn't understand why one of the horses got out. As I looked up, I saw what appeared to be my horse who has a white coat, so I began to try and make out where she was through the heavy rain. As I approached to try and catch her, 
I started to realise that this was no horse at all. This was a large white figure amidst the pitch black of a winter's night. As my hand was reaching out to grab what I had thought was a horse, it shot up into the sky. I was convincing myself that I had gone crazy and I imagined it in the hectic weather, so I continued on throughout the farm and went to feed some of my horses. When I turned on the light in the stables, I quickly realised that they were all going crazy, rearing up and snorting, acting completely out of character for them. Even the most quiet horses were going around in circles, agitated. It wasn't the rain belting down on the roof that had them agitated, as that would happen pretty much every day in the winter for us. So I grew increasingly wary and decided to stay with the horses and hope for dear life that one of my parents would question why I was taking so long. However, I would often spend hours with my horses, petting them, talking to them, clearing their stables and much more, so I knew my parents wouldn't suspect anything. I took a deep breath and walked quickly back home, about a three minute walk from the stables. When I arrived back home soaked to the bone from the oppressive rain, my parents could obviously sense something was wrong. My face had gone white with the shock. Before they could say anything I asked, has anyone ever died up by those stables? To which my father who inherited the land said, yes lots of people, why? Almost laughing at how ridiculous I must have sounded. I then said, I know I sound absolutely insane, but I'm pretty sure I'm just after seeing a ghost. Expecting my parents to shrug it off and tell me I was imagining things, I got yet another shock that evening when they both looked at each other and said nothing. I didn't expect this to grab their attention so heavily. My father then asked where I had seen this apparition to which I described the setting and the events that unfolded. When my mother heard the horses were going crazy, she grew anxious. My father then said that his sister, when she was the exact same age, had seen the very same thing in that same spot. To me, it was either the greatest coincidence of teenage imagination, or it was, in fact, a ghost. So the first thing I'm going to say about this story is that if you are new around here or you're not familiar with Irish history, I would massively recommend going and looking up the information surrounding the Great Hunger. But brace yourself that it is it is not pleasant and approximately a million people died during the Great Famine and approximately 2.1 million people left Ireland and went to other countries during the Great Famine and it completely scarred the country. And if your farm obviously had survived the Great Famine and had been around since, you know, since that period of time and before that period of time, it will have seen a huge amount of tragedy and trauma. Like, I don't even think that's speculation. I think that's unfortunately an inevitability. I am absolutely baffled by what you saw. This white figure, this big white figure that shot off into the sky as you went to grab it. I don't even know what would cross my mind if I saw that, if I was in that situation. And I don't know much about horses, but I believe they are very intuitive and intelligent creatures. And if those horses were all agitated and anxious and stomping around and snorting and whatever, it seems to me that that's further confirmation that something was wrong. And you're totally right. You know, you live in Ireland it rains a lot in the winter months in Ireland. Those horses are not going to be suddenly freaked out by a bit of rain. And then to have the further confirmation that your aunt had seen the same thing many years before. I still don't understand how or why or what the significance is of this entity shooting off into the air. Fascinating. I'm not entirely sure that we've had a story quite like that before. Customers are rushing to your store. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it <clears throat> a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. Shopify POS is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you to drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. 
Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system or use Shopify's POS Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus Shopify's award winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com forward slash real life ghost stories, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash real life ghost stories to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash real life ghost stories. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Around this time of year, there's such a huge emphasis on gift giving. And while I love gift giving, I also think it is incredibly important to be able to give to yourself in whatever way you see fit. It might be as simple as allowing yourself to have a luxurious bubble bath, but the holiday season is a great time to start giving back to yourself. And would you believe it? I think the best way to give back to yourself is by going to therapy. You live with yourself every single day and therapy is a really good way to empower yourself. It is also a really good way to learn positive coping skills and to learn how to set boundaries. And look, like I've said before, it's not just for people who've experienced major trauma. Therapy is beneficial for everybody. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule, which is incredibly important in 2023 and coming into 2024. All you need to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. It is the season of giving. And I think it's super important that you also recognise that you can give yourself what you need. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Real Life Ghost Stories today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Real Life Ghost Stories. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor. The holiday season can be such a jam-packed, busy time. And you might be thinking, how am I going to fit in nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel me on these crazy, busy days? Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service. And they can help you to eat well for breakfast, lunch and dinner by offering chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. Sometimes when life gets too hectic, meal prepping ends up taking a back seat. But with Factor, you can skip the meal planning, the grocery shopping, the chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up, etc. And get Factor's fresh, never frozen meals delivered to your door. They are literally ready in two minutes. So all you have to do is heat it up and enjoy. You can choose from over 35 chef crafted meals every single week. And these meals can be chosen to meet your specific preferences. So whether you are vegan or veggie or you want extra protein, whatever it is, head to factormeals.com slash real life ghost stories 50 and use code real life ghost stories 50 to get 50% off. That's code real life ghost stories 50 at factormeals.com slash real life ghost stories 50 to get 50% off. And story number three comes from Lisa. Four years ago, I was in the shower and I was thinking about my friend's mother, who is also a friend of mine. We have spent many glasses of wine together. I'm in the shower and I got this very cold air down the back of my body, like I could physically feel the cold, like someone touching me. I got out of the shower from the other side that I normally would get out of, which is not like me, as I always get out of the shower at the same side. As I was looking in the bathroom mirror behind me, I see on the back wall of the shower two fresh handprints. The part I haven't told you is that my friend's mother had just died the day before, and I do believe that she was in the shower with me, and somehow told me to get out the other side of the shower because I would not have seen the handprints if I got out on my normal side. Her mother also knew in life that I am able to connect with the dead and communicate with them. That would absolutely terrify me. (laughs) Even if I thought or knew that it was my friend's mother who, you know, was also a friend of yours. So somebody that you were presumably close with, etc. If I turn around and I see two handprints on my wall in the shower that I know are not mine. 
you best believe that I am freaking out. Not that I would be dramatic or anything, but here's the thing. It's so nice that your friend's mum knew in life that she could communicate with you when she passed, you know. That's really lovely. And story number four comes from JB. When I was in the fourth grade, I was probably about 10 years old, we moved to Aberdeen Road. This was a Cape Cod home where the upstairs was my room, my brother's room and an attic crawl space. There were very cold spots in my room and I could feel one, possibly two people or spirits watching me and I could feel them near me like when someone is in your personal space. This was every night before bed and sometimes during the day. I had to walk by them or through them to get to my bed. I could see my breath, it was cold in that spot and I could see a light white smoke or a mist in that area. We would put heavy boxes in front of the attic door and the boxes would be moved and the attic door wide open. My brother's bedroom window would be wide open after every attempt to keep it shut, including wiring it shut. When we would sit and play on the carpeted steps, we would hear footsteps going up and down, but there was nobody there other than us. Sometimes, when returning home in the evening with our parents, the front door that was locked by our parents would be unlocked, and from time to time the doorknob would turn as we approached the house. When our parents were frustrated with me, crying that I was scared to sleep in my bedroom, they would let me sleep in the front room on the sofa bed that was directly under my bedroom. I would cry until they'd make my brother sleep downstairs because I was afraid for him to be up there alone. From the sofa bed, you were facing the stairs to our rooms straight ahead, and to the right was the hallway to the bathroom and our parents' room. As I got comfortable and ready to fall asleep, I felt someone looking at me. I looked up and there was a black silhouette of what looked to be a thin man with a hat. He was next to my parents' bedroom door but looking out at me. I quickly looked down, but heard in my head, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. I looked up again and he was still there. I closed my eyes as tight as I could while thinking of anything but him and I fell asleep. This went on for months and months because our parents wouldn't believe us. I thought they just gave in and said they believed us to get us to shut up about it. But last week, my mom said, Do you remember the ghost in Aberdeen? It was so cold in your room and the attic and your brother's window would open no matter what we did. There have been multiple things that have happened when close relatives have died. Tragically, my dear cousin died at 25 years old. It was a very emotional time for sure. She was the baby cousin, cute, spoiled and sassy. She was great. I had this designer bag that she wanted. She really wanted it. I was currently using it and I loved it. I could have given it to her, but quite honestly, it was fun to not give her what she wanted for once. A good six months went by with her begging, pleading and trying to make trades for the bag. At this point, for both of us, it wasn't even about the bag anymore. Finally, I gave in. I gave her the bag and she was very happy. I said, okay, I better see you using this bag after all of this. After her tragic passing, we had her service and things were starting to seem real. My aunt had kept asking me if there was any of my late cousin's belongings I would want for a keepsake and I kept saying no, until I remembered the bag. I said, you know, if no one else wants it, I'd like to have a bag that I'd given her about six months ago. No one had the bag, no one could find the bag, and I just thought that it wasn't meant to be. Another week went by and I was driving my car into the godforsaken Walmart parking lot when I get a call from my aunt. She sounded really happy and excited. I've got it, we have it, okay? The bag, it's blue, right? Yes, the police had it all this time. We had no idea, it was in the vehicle. She was carrying it that night. I was happy, sad, emotional. I hung up from talking to my aunt and I heard my cousin's voice with a little giggle, saying, Huh? How's it feel? I wasn't quite ready to give it to you yet. And whether it was all in my mind or not, I could see her sassy, beautiful smile. The little shit got me. 
that house on Aberdeen Road sounds absolutely terrifying. Like I can I can just imagine you being like, please, please let me sleep downstairs, but don't leave my brother up there alone with whatever it was, because whatever it was clearly had some sort of strength. You know, it's moving boxes, heavy boxes that you put in front of the attic. It's opening windows that are wired shut like that's pretty crazy. Although I kind of like the element of politeness of opening the door, turning the doorknob as you guys approach the house. And it's been a while since we've had a hat man sighting. But here he is, back again, scaring children in the middle of the night. This time talking in your head, telling you, no, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. You can close your eyes, but I'm still here. Being a creepazoid, just standing around, freaking out children when they're sleeping. And look, like I always say, it's validating to hear your mom being like, no, no, we, we, we experienced those things too. And I am terribly sorry about the loss of your cousin. It is always so difficult when people pass away young and it sounds like you guys had a real sibling relationship you know where you sort of do things like nicely to spite each other nothing too bad but I'm glad that you were able to retrieve the bag that was so significant to your relationship in that sort of silly little way thank you so much for listening to today's episode thank you to Vicky Tara Lisa and JB for sending in your stories remember the last story came from September the 6th 2023 and if you would like to send in your story you can do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast at gmail.com you can also check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com and if you are desperate for some extra content you can subscribe to the Patreon that is patreon.com forward slash stories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month you get access to heaps of extra content as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad free and on that note i shall see you tomorrow